So today we're going to be talking about engagement on social media and how you can increase, thank you, Carissa, how you can increase your comments, your likes, your shares, and get people talking on your post. Um, I think the biggest thing here is that people, people are good to post on social media, but they just don't know how to start that conversation and they forget to use call to actions or they forget to tell people exactly what they want them to do. So we're going to talk about some of that. And then I just have some little hacks that I use to get people talking on my Instagram page. Here's what we're going over today. It's all about engagement, getting people to comment more, like more, share your post, get your stuff in front of their friends. So we're going to go over the content that you should be posting and how much you should be posting each week. It's probably going to surprise you and it's probably going to overwhelm you. Shareable content. How can you make content that people actually want to share? Calls to action. How do you get people to comment back to you? Carousels. Carousels are super... Um, popular right now over on Instagram. They're also, they're also, they work too on Facebook too, but on Instagram, there's this functionality that allows you to swipe through photos. So we're going to be talking about those and why they're super important for engagement. Stories, Facebook and Instagram. Collaborations, which are new and hot on Instagram. And then the timing of your posts, like when should you even post? What's the best time to post? And then hashtags. So we got a lot to go over today. Perfect. Thanks for the emails, guys. All right, so first and foremost, I want you guys to know that Meta, who owns Instagram and Facebook, their algorithm actually prioritizes accounts that are using them. So the main point of social media, Facebook, Instagram, honestly, all of the social media channels, the more that you use their network, the more they're going to show you off to other people. They know how much time you spend on their app. So for me, with my Instagram as large as it is. And for me, like my main goal is to grow that because that's how I get my paid collaborations. That's how I get my engagement. I spend probably a good amount of time every day on the app, but I think for you guys, if you could at least allocate 15 minutes a day spending on Instagram and Facebook, it's going to help you versus not spending any time at all. Um, I wanna make sure that you guys are posting not only photos, but make sure you're posting reels. Make sure you're posting carousels. If you keep hearing that word and you're like, what the heck is a carousel? I'll show you guys real quick. Um, a carousel is the post that allows you to swipe through. So I'm just going to pull this up real quick. My last post on my Instagram. If you're not following me, you should. Social Marketing Queen. We actually, though, honestly, I would love for you to follow me. But if you followed my... Um, agency, we are now only going to start sharing um, social media tips specifically for realtors. My page is more for just like business owners in general, but this one's just for realtors. But this is Influence Studio. And I'm going to show you what a carousel is. This is a carousel. See this little sign right here. It shows you that there's more than one photo there. So that's a carousel post. And it just allows you to swipe through. The reason these work so well is because people end up spending more time on them. At the end of the day, the more that people spend time on your posts, the better it's gonna perform. So if you have someone that's on your carousel and they're taking the time to read through and slowly swipe through, they're spending more time on it, that post is going to get pushed out to more people. Another thing about carousel posts is they are more likely to end up on the explore page, which is, this big, huge search page that's on Instagram, you're more likely to show up there with carousels. Like look how many carousels right now. One, two, three carousels versus one real, one static post. So carousels are super important. An easy way for realtors to do carousels is to post a listing. You've got a bunch of photos of that listing. So just post them all on there. You can post up to 10 photos for a carousel. So use all 10 if you can, and that will get you more time spent on your post. All right, let's get back to it. And feel free to pop in questions if you have any. Where do you go to make the carousel? I don't, didn't see where to do that. Yeah, that's a really good question. Okay, so if you're making a like a graphic carousel, I would recommend Canva to you. But if you're just posting like a, a collage of photos as your carousel, what you do is, my daughter has my phone right now because she's sick and at home. What you do is when you go to post the photo, I'll send you guys a, uh, oh, how to on this. 
But when you go to post the photo, you'll see a little button up top that looks like what I just showed you guys, like the one that looks like several photos, and it allows you to click more than one photo to post. But I'll send you guys an article on that. That's a that's a really good question. That would be awesome. Got you, girl. All right, cool. Um, lastly, with a content audit, aside from posting all kinds of formats, the carousels, the static, the reels, I want you guys, I talk about this every time I think about I think, but I want you guys to go live on Instagram and Facebook. Um, there's a couple of reasons why I want you to go live. One, anytime you go live, that's a, that's where you get on video and you are right there. It's in your space, nothing's edited, it's you. When you go live, it um, notifies everybody on your friends list. So-and-so is going live. So someone who hasn't thought about you in the last year, maybe they don't see you in, your, in their feed anymore they're getting a notification about you now. The best way for you guys to go live, especially with the work that y'all do, you could go live showing off a listing that you just listed. Hey, I'm here at 301 Two Lane Circle. Just wanna give you guys a little sneak peek of this new listing that I got and show it off. Um, say you don't have any listings, that's cool. Get on there and do a Q and A. Um, ask your audience, tell them that they can submit questions in the comments and you'll answer them live for them. Or you could do a mini training. Maybe you want to tell them how to get pre-approved. A lot of people really don't understand what all goes into that. They think it's a lot. They think it'll affect their credit score. So go on there and just educate them. You could do five minutes. You could do 10 minutes. The best timing I see for lives is around 30 minutes. And you think that that's a long time, but I'll hop on there to talk about one of my products that I'm selling or my memberships. And I end up getting to the 30 minute mark and I still want to talk because once you get on there, you kind of get more confidence because people start commenting to you. And so it's something that I really want you guys to work on for 2023 is to go live on social media. All right, so this is what I recommend as far as posting. And this is for aggressive growth. If you're like, Caitlin, I want to get to 10,000 followers on Facebook and Instagram. This is what it is going to take for you. You need to be creating a lot of reels, first of all. And if you're like very lost in what even you should be posting as a reel, I do have a membership called IG Growth Plus, and I send you reels to post per month or every week, um, templates, Canva templates, but you guys already get those with LPT, and then captions. So if you need some extra help with reels, I do have a membership for that. But three to five reels per week, two or more carousels, one Instagram live per week, that would mean four a month, and then three to five stories per day. Stories are actually really, really easy for you to do as long as you have a little bit of confidence. They're probably actually the hardest for you guys because you're like, Kaylin, I don't want to get on the camera and talk to people. But really, all you got to do is just show up and say, hey, guys, here's what I'm doing today. Like, let them know, are you at the office today doing paperwork? Are you getting someone, are you helping someone get pre-approved? Are you going out on a listing presentation? Are you going to an open house? Like, just tell them what you're doing and people will start to respond to you in the messages and your DMs. And it'll just, again, it'll give you that little boost of confidence. And the more you do it, the more confident you'll get on camera. And then you'll start feeling comfortable on camera and you'll start doing more reels. So I highly recommend stories. Okay, cool. Tracy, you're interested in the reels in the membership? Yes, I'll send you info on that. Um, that one. I love that membership just because I'm telling you guys exactly what to do every week. Um, okay, so who on here, tell me in the chat if you follow the broke agent on Instagram. No? Okay, they're really freaking funny. So if you're not following them, you should follow them because you will relate with everything that they post about. But the reason I shared one of their posts today is because they share shareable content. So for example, I was just, I was just finding an example for you guys in this one. I, I'm not even a realtor, but my husband is, and I work in real estate marketing. So I read this and I just resonated with it. It says being an agent must be awesome. You get to show cool houses, make your own schedule and be your own boss. Me cleaning up dog poop in my seller's backyard for two hours. Like I know you guys have to do all the uglies behind there too, when you're listing homes, but the broke agent does a really good job at sharing content that people relate to and they want to share it to their stories, which gets them in front of more people. So 
another thing about the membership I have, one of our templates is just like this. So you'll just be able to switch out your photo and your name, and then you're able to make your own shareable content. That's funny. Um, but quotes, graphics, repurposed tweets, which is, which is what this is. They're everywhere on Instagram, on Facebook, and they're perfect for driving engagement because people comment on them. They tag their friends in the comments. They like them. They send them to their best friend in the DMs. Um, they think they just, they work really well at starting a conversation and people just resonate with them. So for shareable content, if you're wanting to do something that's shareable, and this is what I encourage you to do at least once a week with your postings, think of something that your sellers or your buyers, or maybe even another realtor would relate with and share that once a week. Those tend to work really well. We actually just did one too. This is another template in the membership. Um, uh, I told you guys, Influence Studio, we're just going to be doing real estate marketing. And so this is another piece of shareable content. This is actually considered a reel, but it's just made in Canva. Um, that feeling when both the wife and husband finally agree on the same home. That one's on influence.studio Instagram page. Okay. Okay. Next one. Call to actions. This is probably the most important part of in increasing your engagement. I will have people all the time submit a profile audit for me to go look at. And they're just like, I can't grow. No one's talking to me. I can't sell my products and I'll get to their page. And they just, they don't even have a call to action on their posts. So every single one of your posts on Instagram or Facebook needs to have some kind of call to action. And a call to action is something that tells them to do something, whether that be this one, for example, this is one of the templates I made for LPT agents, by the way, and I'll email these to you guys. This says, what's your favorite place in your house? So the call to action here is them commenting on the post to tell you what's their favorite place in their home. Another call to action might be message me today for a free home valuation or call me today to learn more about this listing anything that makes them take action. And it, it doesn't always have to be salesy. It doesn't have to be the home valuation or the call me. It could be something simple as drop your favorite home and your, your favorite spot in your home in the comments below. Anything that gets them to do something on your post. There's another example of a, a graphic that I made for you guys. This one's a little bit harder because you're asking for a little bit more but this still tends to work. Sometimes this is kind of like a Q and a, what are you looking for? And then people might drop in, Oh, I'm looking for a three bedroom home with a pool or, Oh, I'm looking to rent an apartment, which obviously we don't want renters, but some people do property management with NLPT. Um, but this is a template that's already made for you guys. I would just tell you to switch out the photo for your own photo. And then you could post this on your page. Um, when you do post this template, say you decided to use it, go ahead and write in the caption, like, Hey guys, I'm looking to hear from you. What kind of home are you looking for in 2023? And then they could tell you like their dream home. If you don't want to be salesy like that, you could change this. This is all editable in Canva. When you pull up my templates, you're able to edit the wording. You could switch out the template, whatever. Um, as a realtor, you guys could get pretty creative with your questions. So I put in some suggestions here. I think the best thing that y'all could do is put out like local recommendation questions because people love to answer those. So you could say like, Hey guys, what's the best restaurant to go for a date night tonight? And people will just tag all their restaurants in the area or what's the best date night. What's the best book you're reading right now for 2023. Um, gosh, I can't think of his last name right now. Matt does a very good job at this. Matt Buckley. He does a really good job on his Facebook. I don't see him posting graphics with it, but he posts a lot of like inspirational stuff. And then he always adds a question and I see his comments going off. So he's really good at, at doing the Q and a thing that gets more um, engagement. Pro tip two, there's also a question sticker on Instagram. So let me show you that real fast. Uh, we'll get to that actually. I'll get to that. Um, before we get to that, let's talk about carousel posts. So this is one, this is a carousel post that kind of gets people to swipe through. And I love this template 
because there's a little spot here that says swipe so people know how to swipe it. But this is a good carousel idea for you guys too, besides just showing off home photos. This one's five common mistakes first time home buyers need to avoid. And then the slides would go through and teach them like mistake number one, don't do this. Mistake number two. Um, Canva has a ton of free carousel templates for realtors to use to where you could educate your buyers and sellers. Um, I always recommend doing content that they can't just find on Google, do something that's like kind of insider information. Okay, here's the stories that I was just talking about. So a really big part of upping your engagement on Instagram and Facebook is getting on your stories. Um, I recommend you get on there daily, but if you can't, say you're just, you don't have the time, aim for three times a week to begin. Um, there's a bunch of different things you can do on stories. For example, this is one of our clients, Kelly. She got on stories and was telling us about a fixer upper that's $5 million in San Clemente. Also their homes are crazy over there and the prices are crazy over there in California. Um, but she gets on all the time and shows off her listings. And then what I was going to tell you guys, if you don't want to put your face on there, the example I'm giving you actually has a face, but you could literally just do a picture from your phone and then add this question sticker. So when you go on to Instagram and you go to click on a story, you can pull down the stickers button. It's at the top right. And when you do that, it gives you a whole bunch of examples of stickers. There's a poll sticker, a question sticker, um, all kinds of stuff. But the question sticker is the one that I think that you guys should start off with. And basically you write in the question box, like ask me anything about real estate or ask me anything personal. Sometimes you wanna get personal with people and talk about your personal life to help nurture that relationship. Um, but there's a lot of different questions you can ask and then when people reply to that questions box, you'll get a notification in your notification thing. And it'll say, you can click on it. And once you click on it, it allows you to post that question back onto your story. And then you can either answer your story like with text or you can get on and just answer your story talking. Um, I do a lot of these on Social Marketing Queen. So if you kind of need some inspiration on how you can do this, you can follow me there and kind of take from me. But anytime I do these ask me anything questions, I end up getting a ton of engagement. People like talking to me. They like asking questions. If I'm trying to sell something, it's a really good place for me to sell. Say, say that you're not even getting any questions. You could put in some fake questions. Um, you can actually write your own question and submit it and it won't say that it's from you. So <laughs> you can like think of like questions that you think people want to ask you and post them there. Or you could even say you had a listing and you're trying to like get it in front of people. You could ask a question like, do you have any homes for sale right now? And then that's your way to put in your own listing and show them off. So a lot of cool ways to use that question sticker. Another really fun thing to do on Instagram that increases engagement. This is not available on Facebook yet. It's only on Instagram. You can collab on either an Instagram reel or a post. So this would really work, especially for you guys and how tight knit LPT is right now. Maybe one of you guys were on this call today and then, um, you know, afterwards you saw some so-and-so's name and you look them up on Instagram and you say, Hey, you want to do a collab post together? Sure. Cool. So what you can do there is either do a reel together where you, let me just show you. I'm going to have to show you because y'all are going to be like, what the heck is she talking about? So I do these collab reels with business owners all the time. The most recent one I did was, where's it at? Oh, this is Netflix. Hold on. Let me go to my page. So I did a reel with Martha Marie. Okay, it's not gonna show up. Here's one. Here's one that I did with my friend who's also in social media, your social team. She recorded a reel and then I recorded a reel and she ended up editing them together to where it looks like we're together. This one's probably not the best one to show y'all cause y'all don't need to waste your time doing editing. So let me find you one more. Hold on. Where's the one with Martha? 
here it is. Okay. Martha recorded herself and I recorded myself. And then we made a reel using both of our videos together. And then we just invited each other as a collaborator. So now this reel shows up on my profile and her profile. So obviously we don't have time today to kind of go over like a tutorial of how to collaborate with each other. But if you look up collaboration reel on Instagram, you can learn how to do this and you can collaborate with someone else on your team or someone else in LPT, or maybe you want to collaborate with um, a someone in the mortgage industry. Maybe you have like a, you guys want to talk about pre-approval. So, so-and-so could record himself talking about pre-approval and then you're on there too. And it shows up on both of your, your pages. Um, it's, it's, it's a little bit harder to do. It's not like super easy, but it is something that really will help you get in front of a new audience. Um, one more thing too, if you don't want to, if the reels kind of scares you and you're like, that sounds a little hard for me, what you could do is do a photo together or maybe do an informational post together, educational carousel, and then you just invite each other as a collaborator. Then your post that you post on the five reasons to get pre-approved is also going to show to so-and-so's friend because you invited them as a collaborator on your post. So just make sure you look that up after this training and I'll send you guys a little um, pro tip on this. I'll send y'all an article on this in the email that I send for follow-up because it, it does help you get in front of a new audience. All right, so posting at the right time. One of the biggest questions I get for social media marketing is when is the best time to post? And honestly, the, this answer is different for everybody, but I'm gonna show you guys a little hack that I learned from Facebook. So. When you go into your business page, I have to show you guys from the beginning. So you'll pull up your business page and you'll scroll down to the bottom where it says Meta Business Suite. You have to have a business page for this to work. And then know that you can connect your Facebook business page to your Instagram business page. You can see right here that I've connected both of them. Facebook will walk you through how to do that. So Besides the insights here, which will kind of show you what's working for you, what's not working, how your posts are performing, we're not really talking about that. We're talking about the best time to post. So you're going to click over here and click on planner. And you're going to act like you're going to do a post. So you're going to go to create. And then this will pull up. So what you're going to do next, you don't even have to put in anything, but you'll go to schedule right here and this pops up active times. And that's going to tell me when my, when my most active times are for Facebook. This is when most of my audience is on, which is very interesting because I post most of my content at 9am. So this is telling me that I need to start posting in the evenings. So I think I'm going to tell my team that, um, but this is really good to look at and just see what your most active times on. And you can see right here recommendations are based on when your followers are most active on Facebook in the last week. So this will update for you guys. So you don't ever, like maybe you use 7 p.m. for a week and you wanna kind of see like, is this still working? You can always come in here and it'll update it for the last week. More than likely it's gonna stay the same. I wanna just see if this also does this for Instagram. So let's just check real quick. It does, and look at that too, my times are way different. My time on Instagram is noon. So, very interesting, something that you guys should um, look into. I love telling you guys about Business Suite just because it's something that saves me a lot of time. I said this on our last call, but if you downloaded all of the templates that I made you guys and just came in here and knocked out scheduling them, you would have a whole month worth of content from those um, templates at least to where you're posting three times a week. So I highly recommend you doing that if you have the time or maybe you have a VA that could help you with that. VAs are kind of super cheap at the moment um, for social media management. So you could always do that if you wanted to. All right. And then lastly, we are going to go over hashtags real quick. So a lot of people ask too, like, are hashtags still relevant? Do they work? Absolutely 100%. Hashtags will help your posts get in front of more people. Now for a realtor specifically, I highly recommend tapping into local hashtags just because like 
the main point of your business is to reach people locally who want to buy or sell. So um, if you have like a time to carve out like 30 minutes, go to Facebook or Instagram. I'm going to show you guys real quick, a little trick. And then I'm just going to go home real quick. If you come in here and look up like hashtag, I'm just going to type in like Orlando real estate. 14,000 people are posting about this and then you'll see anyone that posts with that hashtag. So you can also keep your competition here. But 14,000 hashtags is not that much. So the competition for that, like if you just started using that ongoing consistently, I think you could definitely be ranking high up here. Cause look at this post right here from Veronica. She's only got one like and one comment. So I see Matt. Okay, the WeMart group. Okay. Yeah. So that's something really easy to do. You can also type in like um Orlando Realtor. Let's just see how much. Only eleven thousand people are using that one. So look at LPT showing up on the searches. Cool. So if you go in here and kind of put in like your location and then realtor, location, real estate, location, um, what's the other one? Real estate agent. You could type all of those in. And then on top of that, sometimes just do Orlando, Florida and don't add realtor into it. Because a lot of the times people will search. Let me show you what happens when I search Orlando, Florida and just press enter. It's going to show me posts that use that hashtag or that use that word in their, um, in their caption. So might not have known that, but Facebook does have a search engine there. So going back to the hashtags real quick, there was a study done by Later and it um, showed that, let me see, out of how many posts was it? It was out of a lot of posts. Okay, Later looked over 18 million Instagram feed posts and this is the um, results that they got from it. The more hashtags that people used, the better their engagement rate. So you can put in on Facebook and Instagram, you can put up to 30 hashtags. And that seems like a lot, but if you start really kind of thinking about keywords based around your industry and your location, you can get to that pretty fast. But the more hashtags you use, the higher your engagement rate. And then the less hashtag you use, the lower your engagement rate was. So hashtags still work. 